We are talking tiny plants and the most adorable terrarium you've ever seen in your whole damn life today. So welcome. Bloom and Grow YouTube show. Welcome, plant friends, back to the Bloom and Grow Radio YouTube channel. If you haven't already, please be a plant friend and like, subscribe, comment, engage, do all the things that you gotta do to make this YouTube channel keep blooming and growing and reaching as many planty friends as possible. You know what I mean? Thanks in advance. I'm so excited today to talk about tiny plants, the newest trend in the plant parent community. There are a bunch of different reasons why you might be interested in getting tiny plants and collecting tiny plants, and we'll go over that a little bit later in the video. But I'm just so darn excited to share this video with you and also kind of come clean that this is take two of this video. I already made a fully other tiny plants video that I did not publish, which I will tell you about in a minute. But we are here to celebrate my dear plant friend, Leslie Halleck. She published another book. All Leslie does is write and publish books. Tiny Plants by Leslie Halleck, Prepare for Cuteness, overload. It's called Tiny Plants Discover the Joys of Growing and Collecting Itty Bitty House Plants. There are so many different reasons why you might want to get into collecting tiny plants. Number one, they're tiny. So if you have only a few windowsills, if you already have a large collection and don't have a lot of real estate in your home to keep growing your collection, but you want to keep bringing new species home, tiny plants are an awesome idea because they're so itty bitty and they come in the cutest little tiniest pots. And for me, like the tiny little accessories that come with the tiny plants are kind of half the fun of having tiny plants, right? Um, Leslie sent, we'll talk about this terrarium in a little bit. Leslie sent me this terrarium. I mean, what? Happy hour, tiny plants. I'm freaking obsessed. Um, I, I'm obsessed. So anyway, tiny plants, lots of different reasons. Also, there are more... Um, for mindful plant parents, if you've taken the Bloom and Grow Radio plant parent personality test and you're a mindful plant parent, they're great because they're tinier. They require more frequent watering, higher humidity. You can kind of get in there on a daily basis with tiny plants in a way that you can't with like, you know, your normal Sansevieria or Monsteras that don't need to be watered every day. So there's a myriad of reasons for why you might want to get into tiny plants. And today, on this video, I'm going to show you my collection of tiny plants, several tiny plants that Leslie sent me that I'm growing, this adorable tiny plant incubator terrarium that I've got, and I want to give you a sneak peek of her book in case you're interested in checking it out. She's a great author. She's written a bunch of books that she's promoted on the podcast before. You've probably heard her if you listen to the podcast. She was our guest on The Understanding Natural Light, Grow Lights 101, Rootology. We talk about plant roots. We've talked about propagation. She came on to talk about tiny plants, which is a great teaser. Um, but I wanted to kind of give you a sneak peek of the book in case you're interested in buying it and show you the profiles of the different plants that I have um, to kind of show you some species that you might not know about. So let's get into it. Okay, first off, plant friends, bring it in. I have a uh, confession, a <laughs> plant fail confession for you and a public apology to Leslie Alec. <laughs> with this video. So this is the second video that I'm shooting. I shot and edited an entire other video that I was too embarrassed to publish. We're going to publish segments of that video as B-roll in this video. So a few we a few months ago before Leslie's book was even published, Leslie sent me an epic box filled with cuttings of tiny plants, her tiny plants, her fancy tiny plants that are really hard to find. And she sent me a box of all of them. They were beautifully packaged, thoughtfully packaged in damp sphagnum moss with, um, she used like plastic saucers that she like taped together to make little terrariums to send them. She sent me a card with all of the beautiful names of them in plant Latin and everything you could have dreamed of. And the first video was supposed to be me unboxing these plants and potting them up. Well, I did a real plant parent fail. Tiny plants, especially cuttings of tiny plants, require a little bit more humidity. And I knew that because I've talked with Leslie about growing under glass. She also sent me this in that box. Um, I did this unboxing late at night. So I filmed half the video at night, the unboxing, and then the next day I was supposed to go and film the rest of the video where I like potted everything up. And in the time that I was sleeping, Oh, a few of the plants like crisped up and 
two of them didn't make it. So I ended up killing two of the cuttings that Le Leslie sent me. Epic plant fail because they needed higher humidity and I just wasn't thinking. It was a rough week in general and it was late at night. So anyway, I do want to show you the plants that um, thrived and, you know, bounced back after I kind of resuscitated them. And I want to show you some other tiny plants that I didn't even realize were tiny that I've had in my collection that I've learned more about through Leslie's book. So first off, before we dive in, I can't wait to show you what's growing in here. We've got some tiny plants in there and we have a very special other plant that I'll tell you about in a bit. Um, okay, let's talk about this book. The thing that I like about this book is it's not just like 50 plant profiles of like 50 best tiny plants. Le if we take a look at the table of contents, Leslie actually goes through the botany of tiny plants, why they're micro, why they're dwarf species. So you like learn about, you go much more in depth about the plants. Um, she talks about the different care, there's a whole section on collecting and caring for tiny plants how the feeding is different, how the watering is different, how the humidity is different, the things you need to take into consideration with tiny plants in tiny pots that you might not need to take into consideration with your normal, you know, six and eight inch pots. And then she breaks down the different kind of plant profiles that she has based on windowsill, foliage, flowering, succulents, cacti, carnivorous, semi-aquatic, and then tiny plants to grow under glass, like the ones that I have. Um, and like some of the ones that I killed, and then different ways of styling with tiny plants. So it's a super thoughtful book, and I wanted to just kind of show you a few of the plants that I have in my collection, and then the corresponding pages that um, that are in her book, just so you can kind of see how everything is outlined. So first off, let's talk about this adorable terrarium. This is apparently a vintage terrarium, you can't find it, that Leslie found, and it's obviously a wine glass with this super adorable mushroom head. Um, in the terrarium, I have the Begonia Prismatocarpa that Leslie had sent me. Um, I also have Lemophyllum, a Lemophyllum in here that Leslie sent me, a little bit of Lies Moss. And then I've also been using this as a rooting station for a variegated album on Steranode that a friend, a plant friend sent me, an online plant friend. So it's very fun that it's see-through because I can kind of see all the roots that are growing at the bottom of it. Um, but man, I'm just freaking obsessed with this. And Leslie says when growing under glass, like you want to kind of burp your terrarium. So like ever so often I'll take the top off just to circulate some fresh air in there and put it back. But it's been really nice. And I have to say this Begonia Prismatocarpa. So let's, let's do Begonia Prismatocarpa first. So let's open to that portion of the book. Yeah. Okay. Begonia prismatocarpa. It has the teensiest little yellow leaf, uh, yellow flowers, and when she sent it to me, it was actually flowering. The flowers didn't make it, understandably so, because I almost killed a plant. Oops. Um, but it's really bounced back. So it's got these beautiful teensy little leaves. The flowers are so cute, and I think that's one of Leslie's favorite thing is like all the flowers are just so tiny and adorable. Um, right now, it's kind of growing out of its home in this terrarium. I kind of put a bunch of different of her tiny plants in this terrarium to root out. Now they're all rooted, so I've kind of got to figure out like where I want to put everyone. But Begonia prismatocarpa, otherwise known as the dwarf begonia, touted as one of the smallest of the begonia, so like super teensy tiny. Um, and in this kind of care guide, she tells you everything you kind of need to know. It needs medium to high light to bloom regularly. If it's not blooming, put it in more light. And also that it needs moisture. <laughs> <gasps> okay, anyway. Also in the terrarium, she sent me a Lemophyllum microphyllum, which is a dwarf fern. So like no shit that also needs to be under glass, which is rooted. Um, it hasn't made as many moves. Oh, actually, yes it has. Look, it's thrown off a whole, a whole new stem. So it's throwing off a stem and it's got some new leaves. Um, but it's like a creepy crawly plant. So I might I have another fern terrarium that's under glass with a heart-shaped fern, an asparagus fern, and a maidenhair fern. So I might transplant this lemophyllum into the fern terrarium and kind of have all my ferns in one place so I can look after them um, because they need a little bit more TLC. Okay, before we move on to the tiny plants that I have thriving in my collection, we need to take a moment, a little RIP moment for the begonia peridot, the dwarf begonia that Leslie sent me. When I unboxed this plant, it was in perfect freaking condition, and it looks like a watermelon peperomia, which if you've watched my show or listened to my show, you know that the watermelon peperomia is like my absolute favorite plant in the whole world. 
Leslie sent me this dwarf begonia that looks just like the watermelon peperomia and man the next day it was just it was burnt I mean it was dried to a crisp and it did not make it unfortunately I'm super sad about it um but another very cute begonia will throw up a picture of the photo of what the begonia peridot is supposed to look like and you should definitely check it out it's got a profile in the book as well Okay, the next ones I want to talk about are the Itsy Bitsy Peperomia, the Peperomia Rubella. So I actually pulled two of my Teensy Tiny um, Peperomias because Peperomias are one of my favorite genus. I really like Peperomia because I find that they're way more hardy than other plants. So these plants are happy to not be growing under glass. So this is the one that Leslie profiles in her book, the Peperomia Rubella. She sent me a cutting of hers. I had already had this tiny pot of cutting, so I added her cutting into my tiny pot. I've also, I thought this plant used to be called Peperomia rubicola. I don't know if that's like a second name or if it's actually just Peperomia rubella. But anyway, I freaking love this plant for several reasons. Number one, like it's a very dainty little plant, but the leaves are like juicy. So the leaves are like kind of thick. They're not like too lacy, you know, those little lacy plants that like it's so easy to kind of rip a leaf off. This is more of a hardier plant. And I love the combination of the deep red, almost purple stem and the underside of the leaves are purple. And then if you look closely, the leaves actually do look like watermelons as well. It's kind of a watermelony type leaf. And actually a listener sent this to me in 2020 in like the peak of lockdown in 2020 because she was saying she knew that I liked watermelon peperomia and she felt like this looked like it. Um, but it's got a really dreamy pattern on its leaves that are green. And I just think it's a really happy plant. Um, it's really cute. It kind of grows kind of wild. It's really cute. I've been chopping it and putting it back in the, in the pot just to kind of beef the pot up before I let it kind of grow long. Um, but I really enjoy it and I think it's a really fun plant. The other plant that I adore that is also, I think, considered a dwarf cultivar is Peperomia prostrata, which is the turtle Peperomia. Um, the, the leaves basically, <laughs> I like leaves that look like other things, um, but the pepper, Peperomia prostrata or the string of turtles is another name for it. It's just such a freaking happy plant. It's so freaking cute. The leaves look like little turtle shelves. It's, I wouldn't know, I wouldn't say it's a prolific grower, um, but it's a sturdy little grower. I mean, it's put on a, a lot of leaves since I got it probably eight months ago. Um, once again, I'm kind of like, I will probably cut this off and root it and put it back in the pot just to keep filling it out. Um, you can check the YouTube video that I made about exactly how I do this, how I build plants for free. Like I get really big pots of plants for free because of this technique that I do. Um, but this is another dwarf dwarf peperomia that I really enjoy that you should check out. I don't know the name of this plant. Summer Rain Oaks gave me this plant. I think it's a euphorbia. Um, it has not grown at all since she gave it to me and I have it under really bright light. It's just so cute and delightful. Um, so any other like small cactuses, Leslie in the book has like a whole profile of all sorts of different cactuses that you can get. I really enjoy that. Speaking of that, she did send me in the tiniest of little pots, little mammillarias, um, which are so cute. She says they still haven't rooted yet. It's been like two months. She says to be patient. They're just sitting in dry soil. Um, but these are another plant that I can't wait to have them root a little bit more. Um, and then I'll kind of tip them up and set them into the soil. Uh, but they're like so teeny they're so teeny i can't even stand it how cute they are <laughs> i don't know what i like better the tiny pots or the tiny plants it's like they're both so freaking cute um okay now funny enough this dwarf uh, samurai dwarf snake plant so snake plant samurai otherwise known as dracaena arenbergii sansevieria arenbergii okay leslie sent me this plant years ago uh, just as like for like my birthday or for Christmas or something, but she sent me a little plant. Um, I will say it's doubled in size since she sent it to me, but it's still particularly small. I am obsessed with this plant. When it was sitting in my southern facing window in our apartment in New York City, the leaves got so chubby and chunky and it, like I said, doubled in size. When she sent it to me, it was like this lower half when it was like a little bit smaller. But what a cool, if you're like a Sansevieria collector, like if you like collecting snake plants, this is such a fun species. The tips are rose gold. They are so cute. Once again, for the tiny plants, it's super hardy. 
You don't have to water it that much. Um, with tiny pots, you have to water tiny pots just more than, you know, this Sansevieria is going to get watered more than any other Sansevierias I have in like six or eight inch pots, obviously. I also like that in the book that she like suggests other plants that grow very similarly. Um, and she explains that whole Sansevieria Dracaena thing in the book as well. But man, 10 out of 10 recommend this plant. Love it. Sits on my windowsill. So happy. Such a grower. And I just... I love how chunky those leaves are. I just think it's so fun to look at. And any plant that has like any touch of rose gold, I'm here for. And then last but not least, um, she sent me these two really cute Echeverias, Echeveria raspii and Echeveria globulosa. They're these really beautiful um, purple and I mean the most beautiful hue of blue Echeveria I've ever seen. The purple one, I'm not sure which one is which. The purple one is stretching a little bit. It's a little etioliated. I recently, I noticed that and I recently propped it up even higher. But they're kind of still rooting out. Succulents take a little bit longer to root. They're kind of, I've propped them into the soil and are slowly watering the soil to hope to kind of beef them up and have them establish. Um, but that's my tour of my tiny plant collection. I really enjoy it. I mean, I don't know, like I said before, I don't know what I like better, like the teensy tiny pots and the teensy tiny accoutrement that come with the teeny plants or the teeny plants. Um, I've got to kind of do some rearranging in this pot. I think I'm going to leave the begonia. Am I going to leave the lemophyllum in there? No, no, I think I'm going to put the lemophyllum in my fern terrarium, which I did a whole YouTube video about. I'm going to leave the begonia in here because it's just so freaking happy. And then I think ultimately I'm going to need to take that variegated elbow node out, which don't worry, I promise I will do a video on. I'm doing like a long term over several months video of the process of this uh, of this monster elbow node. But anyway, tiny plants, comment below if you have any tiny plants in your collections, if you would suggest any tiny plants. Check out this book if you haven't gotten it. Leslie is awesome. Support her. Get the book. It's really fun. It, it has all these different, you know, um, profiles and all the different baby. I mean, like, miniature oak leaf fig. That thing looks so freaking cute. You can click the link below to snag the book for yourself. Thank you, Leslie, for being a wonderful plant friend. Sorry I killed half the cuttings you sent me. Oops. Love you. <laughs> Tiny plants. Tiny plants. I hope you are continuing to grow in your journeys. I hope you're staying curious about what you're growing, why you're growing it, how you're growing it. If you're looking to be curious about something, I can't recommend checking out tiny plants enough because they're super fun and super cute. And until next time, my sweet plant friends, keep blooming and keep growing. <laughs>